Hi everyone, I'm Mior Mama Afiz and I'm a postgraduate student from University of Science Malaysia. I will be talking about the influence of dope solution formulation and spinning conditions on the morphology of PESZ8 mixed matrix solar fiber membrane. This membrane is fabricated for the application of gas separation such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas mixture. Illustrated here is um, the holar fiber membrane. It is cylindrical in shape with a hollow center which we call as the lumen. To separate gases, um, the outer skin layer must be dense followed by porous substructure. This is because um, the overall process obeys the solution diffusion mechanism. Well, meanwhile, the lumen site must be perfect in circular shape to avoid any mechanical strength issues. Well, to achieve such perfect structure and morphology is a complex work. There are reports available, but they are pretty much contradicting with each other. Uh, that is why a study is necessary because the spinning conditions and also the dope formulation is very unique and specific for any kind of polymer. So this study will be divided into two parts. The first one is to investigate the influence of dope solution formulation and spinning conditions on the morphology of the PES holo fiber membrane. PES is short form for polyethylsulfone. Appropriate dope formulation, air gap and ball fit flow will be identified from this section. Hypothetically, formation of dense layer is a result of delayed demixing which can be achieved with high polymer concentration, volatile additives and also long evaporation time. Meanwhile, the second part of this study will focus on the fabrication of uh, mixed matrix solar fiber membrane where ZIF-8 will be included in the polymer metric. ZIF-8 will be included at 10 weak percent and the morphology of the mixed matrix solar fiber is also the main interest of this study. ZIF-8 is included um, to reduce the trade-off effect between the selectivity and permeability which is always associated with polymeric membrane. Firstly, we identified the critical concentration of the polyethyl sulfone dope solution. Critical concentration is highly important because it will be a good indicator in the formation of dense outer skin layer. So, any formulation of the holo fiber membrane in this study will be made based on the critical concentration. We identified that 29 weight percent polyethyl sulfone is the critical concentration in our study. Also, um, the holo fiber will be produced by using the holo fiber spinning setup as shown in the figure down there. And also, the video of the process is provided. All membranes produced will be freeze fractured and will be analyzed using SEM to view the, the structure of the membrane as well as its dimension. The membrane is prepared by dry, wet phase inversion where it will flow through the spinneret extruded through some air gap which is where the dry phase inversion is taking place as the membrane reaches the end of the air gap it will meet the coagulation bath this is where the wet phase inversion will take place in this process the already formed dense outer skin layer will suppress the movement of solvent out of the membrane this will form the sponge-like structure in the middle part of the membrane. The membrane collected in a take up drum will be immersed in the eye water for about three days. It was followed by the process of drying the membrane for another three days before any analysis could take place. These are the findings of this study. Firstly, we compared the dope solution concentration. We used 29 weight percent and 33 weight percent PES to fabricate the holo fiber membrane. As you can see here, both holo fiber membrane produce a similar asymmetric structure. They have outer dense layer followed by voids beneath the outer skin, outer dense layer, and following that is the sponge like structure. If we're taking a look from the lumen side, it also has dense layer but with teardrops beneath the skin. The only difference here is that the lumen site in 33 weight percent holo fiber membrane is not regular in shape. This is mainly because of the viscosity and also the buckling mechanism as discussed by many other authors. 
Meanwhile, you can see that the inner teardrop structure is longer relative to the one beneath the outer the skin layer. This is because the lumen exposed to the ball fluid much earlier than the outer part. With that, we concluded that 29 weight percent polyether sulfone is suitable to be produced as hollow fiber membrane in this study. The thickness of the dense layer is also an important measure because too thick of the dense layer will suppress the permeability of the gas molecules and reduces um, the permeability reading later on. So, uh, with 29 weight percent PS, we vary the air gap and ball fluid flow rate. In this study, we varied from 5 to 20 cm of air gap, while the ball fluid flow rate was right between 4 and 5 ml per minute. For 29 weight percent PS in NMP, we can see that the structure or the morphology of the membrane is similar as to the one mentioned earlier. However, with varying air gap, we can see that the lumen is now begin to have better perfect shape as we use 15 cm of air gap and above with the ball fluid flow rate of 5 ml per minute. Meanwhile, when we included ethanol into the dope formulation, we can see that at the range of air gap studied and also the ball fluid flow rate studied, none of the membrane produced were imperfect of circular shape of the lumen. However, the main difference with the first one is that there is no void beneath the outer skin layer. This is probably because of uh, the viscosity and the lumen is because of the instability during the production of the membrane. For your information, both dry and wet spinning process resulted in phase inversion of the polymer solvent non solvent ternary system. Well, these process are responsible in the formation of the asymmetric structure of the hollow fiber membrane. But in, but in the case of ethanol, the demixing process is too slow, thus less of voids in the structure. So um, readings were translated into a graphical representation and we can see that the trend are pretty much similar for both formulations. For 29 weight percent PS solution and when we included ethanol at 9 to 1 ratio of NMP to ethanol, both shows that the, as the air gap increases, the dense layer thickness also increases. While it is inverse for the dimension of the membrane, which means the thickness of the membrane. So we found out that 15 cm of air gap and 5 ml per minute of ball fluid flow rate is suitable to develop our mixed matrix solar fiber membrane. So we included 10 weight percent of ZIF8 into the PES polymer matrix. We can see that circular shape of lumen is produced for the mixed matrix solar fiber membrane and the structure of the membrane is somehow similar to the 29 weight percent PS where dense layer is formed on the outer skin followed by some voids sponge-like structure and from the lumen side we can have dense layer and also teardrop structure. We can see that ZIF8 is dispersed uniformly in the polymer matrix without showing any agglomeration. However, it is clear that the ZIF8 is surrounded by macro voids. This is due to the fact that the ZIF8 and polymer matrix is incompatible. However, to improve the compatibility between filler and polymer, we can functionalize the filler or even do some surface modification to improve the dispersion and the interaction between the polymer and the inorganic filler. But that is beyond the scope of this study. We come to a conclusion that the spinning conditions and also the dope solution formulation are interdependent with each other. This is because the spinning conditions is very very unique for any dope solution formulation or even the polymer type itself. So we need to identify the accurate spinning conditions to produce the desired morphology and the lumen of any hollow fiber membrane. Before I end this presentation, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. And if you want to connect with us, the links are provided here. Thank you.